This week's episode of the Meet the Brave podcast is powered by Northwest Pizza and Pasta in Ashland, Oregon, where if you think the pizza is good, try hands down the best wings in the valley. Nobody does wings like NWP, and I mean nobody. Order online to save time for takeout or delivery. Northwest Pizza, Pasta, and enjoy the show. You think life's a joke, I slice your throat. You a thug, you about to get your rights for rope. <laughs> hey, bro, hey. He didn't get enough credit on there. I'm a star looking in the sky, you need a microscope. <laughs> Yo, hey. Freddie P, just want to tell you, brother, uh, if nobody else will. You <laughs> want a microscope? <laughs> Freddie P. <laughs> Where, hey, can somebody find Freddie P? I think he'll do an interview with us. Yeah. Think so? Mm-hmm. I think, he's, think he's still rapping. He might be. I know he ain't on the plane to go see Sean no more, so. Mm, don't be disrespectful. <laughs> Was Fred from uh, Miami, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's from Miami? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah, Freddie's from Miami. Chopper's from New Orleans. Babs, New York. Ness, Philly. Nylon, New York. Oh, Sarah's shoot, from, from Detroit. From New York? Right? Sarah's from Detroit. Yeah. Yeah. I would have took Fred's look and his style to be Philly. Like Philly battle. Battle. battle but nah, yeah. But then when he start talking, you get the... I'm, damn, now I'm confused. It's, was Fred from... Nah, Fred was from Miami. Or or like Florida. Maybe, Florida. maybe even if it's not Miami, he was okay, from Florida. Florida, 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 Florida man. Florida man. Say that again. Say that, that was an edit point. Sorry, we had to get, get our microphone situation straight. So, so the band album is trash. Mm. Sarah is the most out of place artist to be in a group. Mm. And Any more hot takes you care to share with the people? This is ridiculous. And Fred won every fight. Now nah, Fred, Fred for sure won every fight. Yeah, that, that's a fact. I'm not, that, that's no debate. Ness, you a legend? It's because Ness keep leading with the crown of his head <laughs> for some reason. My my pants fall in there. Let me move my pants. Why your pants falling, bro? You're not gonna say the band album. How do we start talking about the band? Salute to the band. Salute Puff. Did y'all watch Soul Bro, Real you question. brought up Freddie P, bro. I Younger did. rapper Freddie P uh, lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> about to happen. Salute to the band. But hot take. Hmm. Nah, that's not a hot take. Cause you didn't like the band's album, but please tell me you fucked with them then you can't even albums. And the Day 26 album. Then you can't even go. Uh, day 26, y'all. Uh, Puff was putting out classic reality TV. Oh, for sure. Yeah. No, Puff is a legend when it comes to putting out content. Like, if you put Puff in a room or some shit with a camera, it's, it's going to be cool. Like, think of where we are right now, how we consume, and think about having the whole, not the whole world, but a few million people on the edge of their seats every week. Like, yo, what's going to happen next week? I remember going to school talking about them episodes like they were, like that. The band damn near got wrestling out of here for me. Like, that's a crazy transition. But I feel like <laughs> I feel like it was like wrestling, South Park, in the same realm, and then reality TV. Just like, cause I'm a, were y'all big on Real World or no? Y'all didn't I'm about to say yeah, Real World uh, and Real World. What was this? It was San Francisco. No, San Francisco. No, um, Real World Hawaii is when shit start cracking. It was like a, Miami was lit. New Orleans but it was, was one lit. where it was kind of like Bad Girls Club where they just, they were funky. Like Be- it, it was nothing. That Vegas, was, it was right? Vegas, Vegas, yeah, Vegas. Vegas, yeah, exactly. Vegas, Vegas was the one, I feel like Vegas was like the, the most like, I don't know, because it, it's, it's easy, it's hard to say in hindsight because it's like those, that Seattle, that Seattle one was lit. Yeah, Seattle had big, Seattle was the one when the, the, the girl couldn't get right, right? Like she had real alcoholism on, on set. No, that's Hawaii. That oh, was that's Hawaii. Hawaii. Okay, okay. Seattle was when bruh slapped the girl. Yeah. That, oh, yeah, that yeah, was yeah, the yeah, slap yeah, yeah, around okay, the world. Okay, that, okay. So, is, Sam, is New York or San Francisco the first one, though? I think San Francisco. Okay. San Francisco, New York, Seattle, uh, Miami was, Miami on, was like a sneaky good. Damn. What happened? How did, how did, did, that was a great fucking show. Or was it bad TV? No, it was, it was, a, it was a great concept, and then it just, it birthed a lot of the reality TV that we have, though. Nice. So like the, it just transitioned over to like uh, uh, Jersey Shore and yeah. like uh, some of the other shows that became. But then they, and then MTV pivots into like a real dark space. Like 
16 and pregnant and shit. Like, that's just, that's just dark, bro. But like, that was, like, that was low-hanger fruit. <laughs> like, at that point, you knew that this is the type of smut that we were going to put out, more, and more, it was hey, going to work every more, time. Maury and Jerry Springer have been doing numbers for 30 years. Bro. We want some of that action. It's basically what that conversation bro, was. Oh, it is. It's bulletproof. Yeah. Damn. Which real world was it where the girl tried to say the dude was going to rape her? I feel Whatever like that. I feel like, like that might have been. That might have. I think that was around like the Vegas area, though. Seriously, that yeah, happened. Because the dude was like pulling on her blanket, and she was like laying in the bed. He pulled her off the bed, but he was playing with her. But she was yelling out rape, and she was serious. And he did he get kicked off the show? Yeah. Damn. I don't. Why don't I remember that? That was definitely one of the later ones, though. Okay, it wasn't one of the. Damn. I think so. That happened on one of those shows. That's crazy. Yeah. No, they'd be wilder in there. And it got worse. It, it got, it was, it, you would take on the personality of the location you're in, too. Yeah. Because they were bringing people from different, from different, different yeah, places. Yeah. So, like, if they went to Sin City, then that's what the fuck they was doing. <laughs> they about to sin. Big time. No, no. <laughs> what, what are we doing, fellas? It's the Meet the Break podcast. I'm Honey Draper. Oh, yeah, we didn't even do that. that. <laughs> I'm LG. <laughs> excuse, excuse us. Yeah, we're, we're just, we're, oh man, we're so happy to be here. First, first, let's shout out um, the whole crew, LG, Lex, and all of our viewership. If you're listening via Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Simplecast, Castbox, FM, you name it, we salute y'all. But for our people that have been rocking with us on YouTube, thank you. Anyone that would like to begin rocking with us on YouTube, subscribe and hit the little bell for the notifications and you'll get notified every time we drop something which is pretty frequent because our guy Lex is a rock star follow the IG page I think I did that right yeah, yeah, yeah. god damn you did it like one take yeah like, one, you ain't feel me man I don't, I don't need no, no punching no, no, I don't ask me if I need to punch cause just, just roll just roll I got you sure. <laughs> <laughs> how my guys feel how y'all feel good man feel great yeah yeah yeah, how you doing, man? I'm, I'm good. I'm good. It's a a, a a busy week, but the pod is always like really nice to look forward to. It's a sign of uh, it's a sign of a, of a of a of a restart. Like the slate is clean. Um, we do the show, go home, edit, get prepared for the week, and then the pod. The knowing that the pod is there is like it's therapy. It's it's checking in. It's it's a uh, it's the news, because you niggas walk in here with some shit that I did not hear about. So then it's just a whole bunch of different things going on. And then we're going to get a random phone call from somebody that's just going to really tip the scale. So, hey, happy to be here, man. Uh, what's up with you guys? Legs bug? Man. Life is good. Life is good. Future's first. <laughs> <laughs> got to distinguish. you got to distinguish. Um, Hunt down Rick, little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think. If, is there anything we need to recap from last week? Is there any 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 backlash? Any 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 uh, inquiries? Anything from last week's episode before we just move on? I'll say right now. Oh shit! I was surprised at how many people did agree with me. On the if, bus, if you don't, but <laughs> I was too. I, honestly, I was too. <laughs> No, I feel like Lex opened up Pandora's box with that. <laughs> I think that was just the missing link for everybody. Especially when he double back and goes, well, think about it. How many women don't come? And then I'm like, oh, he got it. Mic drop. He won. He got yeah. it. Yeah. Oh. That was, uh, between that, because I was really surprised because I was waiting to get all sorts of DMs. <laughs> and it was more women. Oh, yeah. Facts. They were like, oh, yeah. And the dude's like, how would you not but? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> That's your I'm just, problem. I'm trying to help you out. <laughs> <laughs> this, don't have, this don't have nothing to do with me. Um, damn. What was I looking at? Yeah, fellas, that's where we that's that's where we are here, back for another show. Um I wanna salute to the Haven Project. Back like we never left. Like we never left. I told you, I told you, I told you. Bro, you are on the podcast. Please don't say anything that will incriminate you or me. How are you, my nigga? <laughs> good, good. Say what's up to the people. Tell them about your company real quick. Oh, okay. How you guys doing? Uh, my name is Davion. You know, I own a company called No Fronts. Hey, uh, so hey. I want to bring out emotion. 
Nigga, you not go. This is not when you go on the court, nigga. This, is, hey, 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 hold on. That nigga don't act like that. Where the bitch ass? That ain't. Hey, I just woke up. What's up? Oh man, what's up with you, bro? Man, just getting up. Oh. Feel me? Feel me? Nah. Salute to No Fronts. If you guys don't are informed already, follow No Fronts. <laughs> Tap in um, one of the one of the most booming uh, marijuana brands on the coast for sure. I'm getting ready to take over the world, bro. I love you. And then, uh, let me hit you after the show. All right, bro. Have a good day. Come on. Yeah, it's always good. Did the fire stay away from there? Man, so um, that's an odd place to start, but a really good question. So a lot of the homies... Unfortunately, um, it is Croptober. Niggas who know, know. Who knows who don't, don't. Um, um, but unfortunately, not even just in like Oregon and the Pacific Northwest, but you talk about the Sonomas, the Santa Rosas, a lot, a lot of the groves, like major groves, start in and around there. And I can't tell you how many people lost their entire crop uh, for this season. So um, I know, I, I granted, Granted, people feel all kind of ways ab about that industry, but but fuck that. It's legal. Uh, the states are taxing it in, in in insane ways now, so people getting their bread off of it. So let's not act like that economy being impacted that way isn't harmful to those people who are dependent solely on that revenue. So, um, so man, sending love to you guys, and and, and hopefully um, you're able to salvage something and, and finesse and, and bounce back. Uh, it's just, it's just tough. It's really, really tough. Um, on top of the pandemic and everything, this just could just add, it feels like it's adding insult to injury and pouring poor salt in the wound. So that's a really great, great question, G. Because I just so happen to have a lot of, a lot of friends and people I really fuck with that are in that industry and doing extremely well. Bet on themselves early, you know, like didn't just hop in on the late wave. Like these are people that have been doing this for a decade plus, you know, um, and now we're really going to be able to start to feel the benefits of their investment and their commitment as early as they did and to just kind of have like it's like a leg sweep almost like it's like you, you can't really account for it mother earth and, and all that shit. you can't account for none of that shit man. so I'm sitting sitting in love them for sure um where we want to start how we feel um great uh on my last episode of Outsider. <laughs> Hell, lucky you. You've had something to do. No, you know, hey, look, look here, man. Don't come in here bragging. Yeah. No, no, besides, no, no. Besides, no besides that, though, I did get put onto like the uh, the the hunting of Bly Manor or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't know that that was a continuation or it's just a, another story from the other hunting show, mm -hmm. the Hunting of Hill House. Uh, so I gotta go back and watch Hunting Hill House. So that gave me two shows. So I'm good. Okay. What are you watching right now? I didn't even want to start here, but I'm glad we did because I got one for y'all that I'm disturbed. It's your fault, actually. Hold on, what? The the uh the killer next door shit. What is that? The American. Oh. What? You, you what, had, is what, what is uh, it called? What is it? Um, American Murderer. The the killer next door, right? Yeah. The family. Bruh. I'm so not. I, yeah. If you want to call it that, it's sick, bro. Like, I, I, like they're reenacting or something? No, 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 no. no, no. no. It's just, just going into that. when they made the documentary, the the wife, the, the dude's wife, family gave the, gave the people that made the documentary everything, hmm. answer machine messages, text messages, like free access to everything that they had. Because basically, the dude should. Should I say spoiler alert before I just say it? Or no, no, don't. Let's not say it, cause I, I, I like, I don't know how many people are gonna watch this. I, I just, I do want to say, I don't know when I got so like sensitive to 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 them type of shits. That was heartbreaking. Nah, Niagara Falls. I was <laughs> like, bro, what's happening right now? Why, why, why can't I turn this this sick shit off? It, it, it's just, it's just dark, but it's re it's real life and. Maybe it's just Bruh's demeanor the whole time that just kind of throws you off. It was somebody's neighbor who was doing foul shit. Man. Uh, All right, never mind. Hey, right. We'll, we'll talk about that later. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If, oh, you must have saw my tweet, and it was like, oh, let me check this out. Because if you did. No, didn't you call me? 
Maybe I saw it. Maybe it was the tweet. But I it think felt, it was the tweet because you liked the tweet. So Okay, it was a tweet. It was yeah. a tweet. I saw his tweet, and then I had a little time, turned it on, and was like, oh, this is sick. I tr- the tweet was the word people might have seen. <laughs> <laughs> Don't so go in there. Up? See that? Okay. You, you, know, <laughs> who's the sick you, you know what always threw me off too when uh, black people watching the scary movies like, oh, don't go in there. I'd be like, I would totally go in there. <laughs> is somebody making noise in the garage? Let me go see. No, the best part is That's when me. they see the door kind of crack open, and then they go over there and run over there and open it. That's dog. That's totally me. Like, <laughs> yeah, if your closet just randomly opens up, bro, you gotta go see why. You gotta go see. Why. Don't, bitch, don't go in there. You ever been in the movies to go see, to go see a scary movie and it's packed and it's like, that's what's happening. You're like, damn. Yeah, no, but if I get a chance, man, just watch the trailer for The Hunting of Bly Manor, bro. Because that, bro, this look, if you put a little girl in a movie, it's going to be scary. It's going to be scary. And if she has to do anything to do with dolls, it's going to just elevate the fuck out of it. So that's the same thing, the, the thing for The Conjuring 2 and all that stuff like that, like why they were so effective. So, yeah. But yeah, we can move on to our well, topic. I mean, no, I mean, no, what we, what people have been coming to us for are our Lovecraft takes and everything. So this is a really dope spot to start, I feel like. We don't have to, they don't have to wait 50 minutes into the episode to get their fix. Like, let's start at the top. Um, did we, should we recap last week? Man, it's a lot of time. It's a lot to, it's a lot of time. So I, do I come in here? Do I come in here every week and say, "Oh, that was the best episode"? Is that what happens, pretty much? If That's kind of how it goes. <laughs> yeah, if you do, for me, I'm just for them to keep this up, that level of writing and execution of the writing. Because you can write a great episode, but if you can't execute it properly, it's not the message won't get transferred. And I just, think it's rare when you go into so much, uh, so much character depth in the first mm-hmm. half of, in the first uh, season too. Yeah. Cause like they're going, they're going in. That's that's what's making it so, keeping it so fresh, is that all the main characters you can see that there's a lot that goes into you know, who they are and like what makes them tick and shit like that. It, so. It's hard to do, and, and the reason I want to get at kudos, cause I, like most of the world, my attention, um, like my ability to like stay attentive is like lessened significantly now. So to keep so to keep me engaged, even if it is only for fifty five minutes or whatever, is pretty fucking tough. And you're like glued to the screen, going, "What is happening?" And then there's this like filler thing that shows do where they go, they they lean on character development to like fill space. And you're like, they're just filling space. I don't need to know that about that person. It, it, it needs to be within a real unique way of the show. And that's usually it. later though like that's like Facts. third third Facts. fourth season Facts. where you're trying to just extend it that's out. true that's true like it's rare when it's just the that's when I, that's how i know there is a lot to tell though because of the fact that they're going into so much depth so for each person in the first mm-hmm. season and doing it and doing it seamless too like so pay uh, maybe everybody is in this way but pacing is such an intricate piece of art for me so even music, right? Um, we'll talk about Reasons record. Um, uh, you, you had it on your notes, and I really want to talk about it because I don't know. I don't know if I really, really fucked with Reason his first few tapes, and even on the Dream his Dreamville appearances, I, something wasn't connecting, and then boom. And I feel like it's just a matter of his like, like he's just gotten he like, bro. You talk about strides, and oh my god. Bruz rapping his ass off, and, and I think he was rapping his ass off before, but it's it's still it's still timing, it's still a t- it's still a rhythm thing. Um, we're talking about JID last night and his, his verse on the uh, the baptized uh, village rhythm, village record might be verse of the year, bro. Like, but it's a timing thing, and it's the same with film and books and everything. It's like there's there's these beats, and they I don't I really do, I would really wish I could describe it better for me personally as a consumer. But Lovecraft is hitting is are, is hitting these pockets in this rhythm that it has its own pulse. Oh my gosh, yeah. bro! Like that shit is it is brilliant. It's hey, we gonna speed you up. We are gonna take you on one, and then we gonna lower your eyes, and then you just sitting there, you like, oh, this is fire, and then all of a sudden it's just ramped up again. You know, like the 
how that how last week's episode started. It's like you're in it from the beginning, and then it pulls back to like to like really develop the story, and then it turns up again, then it slows down, and then it revs up at the end, and then it just cuts off, and you're like, bruh, I gotta wait a week. It's 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 really it's real brilliant storytelling. Do you know that Love Lovecraft like one of the uh, like one of the things that they're I guess one of the takes that they would have on Lovecraft is that it's rushed. The story, yeah, like that, and, it, and how it's shot, right? So they would, so that you would think that. Wait, so one. I'm sorry, G. One, one of the critiques of yeah, it is that it's rushed. Yeah, one of the critiques rushed? of it is that it that is rushed, like, oh. and and it's an interesting critique because hmm. of it lets you know like how many different uh, cultures and are consuming uh, the are show. consuming the show because it, it's a, a a main reason why you would think that it's rushed mm. is because you're not picking up on the nonverbal cues. Yeah. So it it that tend, that tends to happen. That's going to happen with this type of storyline because they don't need to fill in the blank for you on certain things. Like it, uh, it's it's hella funny. Like the 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 scene where. Uh, Atticus walks up to uh, his dad uh, sitting on the curb, mm-hmm. and like he just came out of nowhere. It's like, and so I think he said something like, "Did did, uh, did she know? Did you did you cheat on her?" Or, or did you like cheat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And something like that. But like he came out. No, she, he says, did she, "Did she know?" Huh? He said, "Did she know?" It was, is that what it was? Yeah, we, he's asking about his mom and like his his dad. His dad being yeah. He said he said, "Did she know?" And then his dad's response is, "I never I never acted on it." Is what he said. Yes, got, it, got, yeah, it, got, yeah. it, got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah, so like, but it was like the like how he walked up. Like I, I wasn't even I wasn't even looking at the screen at that time. But then I heard the the uh, his, his his voice and like how aggressive it was, and I found that to be hella funny. And I think that that was like a part of like the like the reason why they shot it that that particular way. So there's um, there's certain things that it's it, it it's not meant for them to fill in all the blanks for you because there's a need for you to also think think on your own, which is a brilliant, which is the way that stories I think should be told. I'm with you. I'm with you. I, I there's only one re, re, one rebuttal to that, mm-hmm. and, and both of you guys feel free to answer. Mm-hmm. Are they? Is it that they're not filling in the blanks, or is it that they're not filling in the blanks the way people want them to fill in the blanks? And by that I mean, this last episode. Spoiler alert! So please turn this shit off if you haven't watched last week's. Um, and that would have been episode eight, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So mm-hmm. please turn it off if you haven't watched it, but. They open up at Emmett's inter- at Emmett's funeral. Yes. Episode two, or is it three? It was uh, two, two. Episode two, they introduced him, and you go and you go back and you go, holy shit! I remember. He, yeah, he had an, the, an the entire ghost, ghost engagement episode. with the Ouija board and asked about his trip and how it was like nigga like, so, well, I, I don't know. I, it's just I. I Critics, critics crack me up when they like talk about. I don't know. It's it's just it's just it's just weird how they how they nitpick certain stuff. Um, but Monty did a really 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 good piece. Which I think is a part of being like a critic. Though. I think like, I, I think a part of it is like you like you're nitpicking. It's kind of like a, a Skip Bayless approach that's meant to like garner a certain response. Got it. Um, so some of it, I think, had, like yeah, I think that could possibly at some point become a part of your persona. Your stick. Yeah, exactly. That's what that's what uh, the point that Bomani was trying to make is like it's a part of it's a part of their stick, it's a part of their persona, but at the same time, it's only for a particular person, right? Mm-hmm. So if you look at the black quarterbacks, uh, uh, our, our uh, Haskins uh, uh, and, and for the Washington football team got benched for Alex Smith this week. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, he ain't getting it fast enough. Meanwhile, your man up in Buffalo can got plenty of bandwidth to figure it out. They was letting Brad down in Jacksonville figure it out. They was letting Brad Chicago figure it out. Giants. Kind of, the you know what I'm saying? It it it, it depends on who <laughs> the, you the are. New York Jets. Come on, they're thinking about getting another quarterback. Come. All of a sudden, now, but like it's like it depends on who you are. Depend it determines how much terrain you have to sort of dial in. Your what you're tr- what you're attempting to do, and this is fuck. G, I, we're gonna talk about this later, but we can start. Our, our, I wanted to go to black men in healing circles because, like last night, I don't know if you know it, it, it felt like a healing circle for me because I need that type of exchange. Hmm. I need, I need black men to, hey nigga, 
like 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 testosterone like that's a that's a thing mm -hmm. and for whatever re there isn't a safe space for us to do that because if you do it outside they'll kill you <laughs> mm -hmm. if you do it to a white person oh my god he's a, he's he's hostile you know you can't do you can't chances are you probably can't do it at work and you and you really probably shouldn't do that with your lady and your and your children so where's the last space you got round table full of the fellas nigga fuck you I don't mean it, but I like we we we're, we're having an exchange right now. Who you who you who you think you're talking to? Like that type of energy, ultimately to walk it down, check levels, check your cell phone, what you're taking personal, what you're not hearing, all these different things. Like we don't have, we're not offered that terrain to figure shit out. They talk about three strikes for niggas, and it's it feels kind of like one mm -hmm. in a lot of ways mm -hmm. where something when you're 12. Can determine and shape your entire life. I don't, I don't. I know none of my white partners have to deal with that type of critical thinking, at at such an early age. You know what I'm saying? And so, how that? I know. I know. I know. I shouldn't loop that in with critics and their critiques of shows, but it's kind of the same fucking thing when we're talking about it. It's like, wait a minute. Why? Why are you moving the goalposts depending on if you if you like me? Or if you, if you, you know what I'm saying, it, 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 it isn't the same across the board, and we see that in in the professional realm. We see that in politics. Like the, depending on who it is, is how they, is how they, is how they determine it. It's real. It, I don't know. So to, to and, and part, and part of it is uh, not having the opportunity to actually be a child hmm. uh, for a long period of time. Man, you know, for a period on. of time that it takes to be a child. You yeah. know. Because um, cause one thing that happens, in the, at least in the black community, is that you're going to grow up a lot faster due to your elements. Yeah. Like, your elements is going to present to you something where you're going to become, you're going to age at a faster pace, yeah. but you're not mature enough to age at the pace that the world is seeing you mm -hmm. as. You know, so it's, it's, it's going to be a constant catch-up process, especially if you're going to enter into, like, the sports world or whatever when... People are oohing and eyeing over you at a very early age, and now you don't. Now you're all of a sudden uh, commodity uh, for a grown adult. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like it's a, it's 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 a, it's a it, it messes with the brain a lot, but it also later on is going to play a major factor in your development process because as time goes on those things are going to move past um, they're, they're going to go past their prime and then you still have to live a life yes. you know what I mean and that's where a lot of people I think are going to be you know end up in like the stuck stage so that's kind of like the um, a lot of the conversations that we were having last night I think it's just like getting to that point where you're you're if you if you look at it as like uh, an abrasive like rubbing up against a uh, against an abrasive material over and over and over again until it like smooths out that's kind of where the group kind of was at that moment mm. because like there are so many different um, things that are being thrown at the group in, from different angles mm. and you would think that you'll be able to take care of it but if you think that you could take care of something for so long it's gonna it's gonna weigh and beat at you if you're not actually getting to the to the crooks of it mm. to eventually small things that you used to be able to take care of are just gonna get just gonna fall by the wayside and then they're gonna compound uh, to like this large item that you can't get past anymore so even like you, when you throw a small thing at them it's gonna it, it ends up being the largest thing in the group, world group. you know what but I mean because it's, it's, it's just going it's just being connected with all the other shit yeah. and that's it and that's in every relationship too where it's like Compound, compound infractions that that aren't that aren't dealt with, and aren't spoken, and aren't spoken of, and it's usually there's usually a multitude of things happening. Um, either a, and this is speaking from, like my shit is like, at some point or another, I responded in a way that's made you feel as if you can't uh, step to me and, ch and check me, and I'm going, no, 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 no. no. I, I respond best to that. Don't please don't coddle me. I'm not as not as sensitive one as one thinks, and it's like ah, I don't really want to hurt your feelings, bro. I don't really, I don't really want to be the one. It's like, nah, like damn, when did we? 
have we been beaten into such submission to where, like, let's let's go, uh, let's go male female for example. Mm -hmm. If you're if if you're if you're if your significant other, if your partner is is trying to if ha, ha, wants to say something, wants to tell you about something, and ultimately is will is willing to just bite her tongue on her strength and like not making you feel away, and you're like 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 dog like we in this together like I want to know want to know what you think how you feel how this makes you feel and you're just missing each other like that on some on some basic on some on what seems to be basic um exchange and communication right and we're dealing with so many things that are that are that are bigger that that are bigger than us or and or we just don't understand or 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 are incapable of understanding what that other person's plight is day to day struggle and then aren't even seeing each other's fight in in the, in in this world to exist. So we're just missing it and and missing the empathy part for each other's experience. And it's like I want I speak I speak about it a lot, and I don't want to I don't want to exclude anybody, but it, it does feel like there's this intentional wedge between the exchange and encounter between not just black men and black women, but black people as a whole. To where we can't empath we're we're missing the empathy and the exchange of what's being said and, and immediately go to personal and emotional when it's it's simply transactional and the person is telling you what they feel or what is happening to them and you immediately personalize that and go, Well, I didn't do no, I'm not talking about you, my nigga, I'm talking about how you how like me. And I don't I don't know what that is or why immediately we go on the defense as opposed to going, oh, this person's on my team, for real. But you, you said it though. You said it. You said it earlier. And uh, like, where else do you have that release? Because Maybe. you can't release that to uh, to someone of another race. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and usually a lot of those interactions that you are actually angry about has stemmed from a lot of those shuns. Uh, communication Thanks. issues that you've had already Thanks. with some of these people, right? So, but when you when you encounter your own, that's where it's not exactly that you feel uh, more more comfortable to do it. But at this point, this is where it's going. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it has to have an outlet somewhere. Like I'm reading um, uh, the Color of Law right now. Oh man, I just ordered it, bro. It's Kevin's fun. reading. Everybody's reading it right now. Fucking amazing. It. That, yeah fucking amazing but um the chapter that i'm referring to is the uh there was um i'm trying to think i just lost my train of thought on where um, the color of law no but before that what was i talking about on the um on the oh not being able to um, uh speak with mm. uh people of another of another race yeah yeah so uh it's it's very similar to uh when they when they originally were putting together uh these different boroughs and trying to figure out how are we going to keep everything segregated mm -hmm. like we have it written into law that uh, segregation is is no longer allowed yeah. but we are not but we can't when one group protests mm -hmm. we have to listen to them because their voices are extremely loud but when the other group protests I have nowhere else to go but to this group that I feel won't last long enough like they won't protest for long enough, so I ha I'm just gonna push my energy that way. If I can't go this way, right? So um, with like waste, uh, with like pol uh, pollution factories and uh, uh, things, uh, factories that make a lot of waste and stuff like that, they were trying to spread out where these where these uh, locations would go, and they would put it into you know they would like to put it into like the uh, suburbs and stuff like that because they have the they have the most land and stuff to be able to put it into but but, that shit. but they ain't having it yeah. and they and they would protest and their protests would get hurt but get hurt by the courts mm -hmm. all right bet but with so we still have to make these factories <laughs> like we still have to make these they things because pe people need it there's still a high demand for these things so we're gonna put it somewhere yeah. they put it next to you know the hoods and stuff like that and yes, they protest about it, but no, they're no, not no, protesting no. for long enough, bro. And it's kind of like the, it's kind of like what it, what the relationship is. It's like, oh, oh shit, y'all, we're not pro. It's not a protest for, 
it's a protest when you go somewhere else where you're talking to them or whatever and you don't even want to hear that shit you can't hear that shit because they're not listening to you in the first place but when you come to your own the, the you gonna hear me you gonna hear me yeah. you gonna hear me because it, it ain't enough it ain't by enough any means, by any means by any means and it I, has to go somewhere and it's so it's so heartbreaking too because the the, the strain that finances can have fuck before you even get the finances just just finessing and moving through moving through the world and don't don't throw on top of that um not having a passion and i know people don't really I'm, I'm curious to know how many people value that on the spectrum of the the input or in the impact or the toll that could take on someone whether they're whether they have a passion or what their career is is attached to said passion and how their their energy or their mind state is and, and as far as being engaged in the relationship right so mix all that shit up the nerve of you my nigga to take anything personal when your lady steps to you and it's just like trying to vent, hmm. and you make it about you. Are you are you what are you crazy? Hmm. And vice versa too. But beyond that, when you when your niggas step into you, and is and is and is experiencing something that he just doesn't have the words to put together, the nerve of the nerve of me to personalize that. And. I want, I want you to see to normalize this, normalize that, nigga. Normalize not taking shit personal, bro. Man, like we'll get so much further in terms of like engagement and hearing people be telling us exactly what they need, and 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 then oftentimes our rebuttal is, well, I think you should do this, fam. You didn't even let me finish first. I'm, I'm. If you, if if you listen, some of the greatest, some of the greatest educators, entire curriculum curriculum is centered around listening to their students think about that some of the greatest some of the most world-renowned educators curriculums is centered around them listening that was the difference between life or death for me bro like having miss Lattimore as a fourth and fifth grade teacher man look here changed my entire trajectory for my entire life and you, you would think you would wonder how could that be so big in the grand scheme of your life it's if it's the fourth or fifth grade no not my name, because i had her two consecutive years where she had to drill into me uh my worth as a young as a young black man <laughs> and then also as a black boy at that time and then also um listen like just go through my many emotional turmoils that i would have like just my outbursts i was an angry child I wouldn't know why the fuck I was so angry. I know why now, you know, like later on or whatever, but I didn't know why I was at that point, you know what I mean? But the fact that, you know, and then some of that being uh, moved over into um, expression, like she had us doing fucking uh, or oratorical fest every year where like <laughs> we ever do we ever doing contemporary dance, bro. Uh, <laughs> like, like, it's just like, it's, you gonna you going get out of this school. I, like, it's, I'm telling you, bro, that, that shit just being... Shout out Miss Lattimore, man. No, sure. you, you got, no that's it. You got it. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> man. But yeah, no, I don't think that's a, that, that could, like Money was saying, that was that's super important, bro. Super, mm. super important. The expression and expression as in a whole. And I know we're on, like, Lovey Dove Fest and women. Well, y'all you, you know how we rock, rock with y'all. But look here. One thing that's going to stop is I'm on to the tricks. Mm. I'm on to the tricks. Mm. L, I'm so glad you put it in the notes. Chicks be leaving shit that only other women. <laughs> I can't even get it out. Women will leave behind items that only other women can identify. Bro. In your own house. Bro. And you didn't you walk past it hundreds of times <laughs> and not even fathom that, for one, it was it was left behind, and then for two that it was gonna rattle somebody's feathers one day. <laughs> <laughs> so. That shit is comedy, bro. Like, I don't know. I I imagine this has happened to everybody, but to to be pressed about something that's been sitting in it's got dust on it for crying out loud. It wouldn't bother me. Money, and the cold part is somebody was stew over that. Like they saw it. A minute ago, didn't address it when they saw it. <laughs> but later on, you just just catch an attitude out of nowhere. You just be like, 
and then you bug back after after a period of time because like the, it continues on like bro where is this energy coming from so okay. now y'all in a full on battle over some shit that you still don't know what the hell no the problem is what well, the fuck is it well you got that bitch scrunchy on the top of your refrigerator my nigga huh you know how much later that comes out though the ho- bro the whole relationship about to go down the drain and it comes, it comes out the point where you like, well, you know what? Fuck it, dude. <laughs> on, on the principle. <laughs> on the principle, because I, I don't know why you're angry and you ain't telling me, so you know what? Fuck it. That's the one part. That's the one part that I think women miss about, like, like niggas for real. It's like, no, like, I'm stubborn, too. Like, Completely. God bless my dad, man. Because <laughs> he did this to me. It's his fault. Like, I got I to gotta prove a point now. Like, I'm, I'm diplomatic as they come, but now I got to prove a point. Mm-hmm. I'm leaving. I'm walking home. We money, we in Richmond. So I'm walking all the way to Oakland to prove a point. Bro, they beat her. Real life. <laughs> Real life. Hey. And do that shit and do that shit with like a yeah. Like 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 in your head you're like, yeah, I did that. She's shit. driving on the side yeah, of the car. Th- Babe, just get in. No. Cause see, in another th- no. <laughs> get your ass in the car, man. Bro. But once you there, you there, I'm bro. There like now. if hey, if hey. you don't Ain't, ain't no coming back now. I'm if, here now. What if, we do? What we do? If it's not knowing what the hell we we beefing about, that okay, women. That's a lot. That's like the like. Don't put your dude through that type of shit. Like, don't let let dudes know what we beefing about, so I can know what type of like where I'm supposed to be in this energy for, in this energy realm. Like, you just can't give me this terrible energy and me not know where it's coming from. No, but and, and then but then it's it really it really that's the only other part too. You be like, fuck. Is some at some point they've been through some shit where, regardless of what the setup is, if if by the time you you two have joined like the conversation is in and around just keep being honest like only for what you do just just tell me so I'm not looking goofy out here. Completely. And you're like, all right, bet I'll do that. Anything be out of place is like. A trigger immediately. It's like no, but I I said I was that I would speak up when I was on bullshit. Like hey, like, that part. I got you. And you're like nah, but this and like oh you you triggered. You got trauma. Oh, here we go. And you, again, that's back to our not taking the personal shit. I, now I'm forced to not take this personal, but I'm so frustrated, bro, because it's just a conversation. Like it's it's 2020. I'm 31. I'm, I gotta be on pure player time. Like that's it. I'm like I, the 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 if it if it was anything else, it'd be it'd be different. But it's like no, bro. I'm I'm exhausted now. I'm dead. That's I just got done talking about that too. It's like oh, this nigga mind me answer the phone. He must be fucking with some I'm Be in this motherfucker every day, bro. Real busy. Clock the fuck in, Luke. Like did you eat today? You know what I have it. You know uh, behind behind some other shit. So the so the last thing I want to do, the last thing I want to do is 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 answer random questions about where the fuck you been at, <laughs> nigga. What? Are you serious right now? One place. I don't go anywhere. I don't go anywhere else. All right, now I'm making it personal. Sorry. Let's let's nah, let's. That's, that. <laughs> That's I, therapy I, pr- I promise this isn't about me, guys. Hey, I promise. <laughs> hey, my thing is just energy, man, and I and I meet it at that point too, and like it, and it also gets to the point where like, all right, so since I'm here and I and I understand that you pissed off right now, we just not gonna talk for a bit, <laughs> and and nothing nothing works nothing nothing messes up the function and the energy of another human being than to just completely not speak, like. We're not even. That's, that's how I know this is my cousin for real. <laughs> that's how I know this is my cousin. Jesus Christ! All right, man, I'm not crazy. All right. Yeah, nah. So yeah, that's, 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 that, that was just a little, a little, you know, one a little on, one, a little one on one, you know. <laughs> um, did any? Did you watch SNL last night? No. Fuck. Bill Burr's monologue. Fuck. Yeah, I marked it. Um, I'm glad Monty played that last night because I. Bro, I am the worst with SNL. Everybody, man. it's not it's not just you. Everybody, like to the point where I'll be forgetting like what SNL stands for. So I'm like, when the fuck does SNL even come on? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, where the hell is SNL? Bro? Hey, <laughs> hey. Oh man, 
you are King Sicko. Bro, like, <laughs> like hey. The next time I come, I might have to, like, get a crown made. <laughs> King Sicko. Oh, man. Now, I, so, I, my SNL, like, like, internal clock is mm-hmm. just the hate on SNL. Mm-hmm. Um, not, and not the, not even the cast. Or the the writers, it's the institution of SNL that's just that's strange to me. Um, but they also have real brilliant musical guests, and when they get a dope host, I'm always excited. So it's fucking Bill Burr, crying out loud. And if anybody's been watching during the quarantine, his podcast was doing stupid numbers. That his appearances on Joe Rogan were, were and Joey Diaz were brilliant. Um, he was in the uh, what's the show, Mandalorian. Was he really? Yeah, he was, that was like, that's oh. a huge thing for him. Wow. And his character didn't die, so. Salute, salute to Bill, man. Like, to see, like, from the from the early Chappelle days and even before that, to, like, watch him stay, like, consistently grind has been, has been brilliant. So, I, I, and then anybody who knows his comedy style just knew it was going to be some, it was going to be some shit. And sure as shit, he, uh, that white fragility shit, he just, he, he did, he did it so well. Um, but it was through the lens, like he he went at he went at white women in a way that they haven't they haven't been attacked just yet, and and had the mirror shown up held up for them. Um, I'm so happy. That was that was master. Cause I can't say it. No, we could say it. Oh no, we could say it. I, but I already brought it up with the uh, with the damsel in distress shit. Yeah. So like that that was damsel the in distress disorder. Which is still one of my favorite moments of the pod, G, by the way. Because mm-hmm. I, 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 that, 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 that does it get pointed out? on YouTube. <laughs> like, does it, does yeah. it, for sure. Does it, uh, like, do you see it more often though? Oh, no, 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 saw the day, no, 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 the day you said it, it was like, I started flashing back to hella other shit. And so now I can't, I can't not see it. Yeah. yeah. It's so prevalent, but you know where, you know where that's most prevalent at is, is amongst white women who occupy liberal spaces in and around black people, predominantly with black men, mm. and can't handle that in again. Mm. That that shit is that shit is wild, and some other shit that we got to figure out how to unpack because there's some sick shit happening out here in the dynamics of white women occupying black spaces, predominantly with black men, and then crying wolf like mm. like it's sick. Yeah. So, so much there. So salute to you, like Bill. You, no, you can say it. You did say it. Bill Burr just said it on national TV on a monologue where predominant, where those viewers yeah. are predominantly white liberal women, thinking that they're going to a safe space yeah. where they're not, because they don't get attacked. It's normally them going at Republican, Republican white men, and like the and like the right. Nah, bro, the left is sick, and the and the people you're you're insulating and like protecting on that show SNL. I'm. I'm so glad Bill came in here and, and kicked y'all back in, cause that's what happened. They they didn't see that coming. I guarantee you, it was it was white women writers in them rooms that was fucked up behind that shit, cause they cause they 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 think they're the the oh never mind that shit was that shit was brutal. Do you believe that they felt attacked? I hope they did. <laughs> do you think he <laughs> like take a number? Like I haven't heard the monologue, but do you think he? Like they knew what his monologue was before he went up there. I'm always curious to how that to how that works. If if he has to if they have to submit their monologue and somebody somebody knows the answer to that and I feel like it's been answered before. I heard it de- depends on who it is. On who it is yeah. and like. But can't they also submit uh, but then do something completely different? Yeah. Yeah. And they can do that too. Like I, I don't see it as like something where you actually depending on who the person is, if you need the actual platform like you do, more than once. Yeah. But it's like, no, no, it's like, oh, I see what you're saying. Like, so, so if you were to back. switch it up, like, man, I don't need to be back here. You know what I mean? I mean but it'd be cool to be back here. Who, who was it? Which, which, was it, was it, was it Pac? Maybe it was Pac that when he got on the first side, and it was like, well, yeah, he can't come back because he did, he made some sort of statement. I don't remember what it was, but I, I'm, I'm almost certain it was Pac. Um, Eddie, Eddie's first time going back, he said something that would, that would make it to where he wouldn't come back for 20 years until this, this most recent time. Um, who else? It's, it's been a few people that have posted that have made statements and it's like, yeah, you, on the strength of NBC, you can't come back here. Um, and so I was, I just was, I was, I was happy because 
Bill got to sort of flex his his the, the brilliance of his writing style yeah. and his timing, and also make it. Those those type of jokes hit different because they're hilarious, and now we're laughing at you, and if you're being honest, you're laughing at yourself and you're going, God damn it, do I do that? You know, and so that's. I think that's why that monologue just rang so brilliant, and and it wasn't just me because the shit went viral last night. Just that, just that one little clip out of it. G was like a minute and a half. Show was great. Um, show, yeah. show was great. Um, Bill still has one of the funniest uh, segments I saw, bro. It was just the one where he talks about uh, watching TV with his wife. Like watching a show with his wife or something like that, and she's and he's not picking up on any of the <laughs> like, any other cues on it, and then she and then they have to have a talk. And he's like, no, I'm not. <laughs> there's no, there's no way I'm gonna start this. But then she starts tugging on his like his male ego, and then now he's just full throttle into that shit, and like he's just saying all the wrong things. He's just digging himself in a bigger hole, bro. That shit is hilarious. Bill, Bill's fucking brilliant, man. Yeah, no, good shit, bro. I appreciate you for definitely laying that out. Um, and if you feel attacked, just get Amy Schumer and just do a rebuttal. <laughs> Amy Schumer. Is That's she still true. doing stuff? Mm-hmm. Amy Schumer then got so many bags, she can do shit whenever she feels like it. Like, she has some of the best management you I think, think so? that there you, is. Amy Schumer does? Yeah. We're talking about the same Amy Schumer. Hey, she ran it up fast, if you think about it. Ran it up fast, but she don't have very much credibility anymore. I don't think she ever did, bro. But like God, you know, God, her God, her God. name alone God. just re- like she God. just gets things off of that name. So that has to come from whatever yeah. management she has or whatever team she has. You got it. Um, there's a lot of new music that we care about. So if we could sort of pivot pivot into that space for a minute, um, we don't have to stay too long. Um, we talked about Twenty One, yeah, for a little bit. I think I think a week spending a spending a legitimate week with it gave it some new meaning though. Um, sonically, I want to salute Metro. Um, writing and con- concept, I want to salute Metro Twenty One and everyone around Big Rube body that uh, it came out that Big Rube actually wrote the monologues for um, for Morgan Freeman. So that was really just really dope on some like historical Atlanta shit. Um, but then also, we we stumbled into a really dope conversation in and around people going, oh, but this ain't as good as his first one, type shit. Mm. And what I what I what I what I never imagined I'd be able to say out loud one day is, don't you dare. Don't one of you niggas dare, not talking to you guys in the room, but anybody listening, don't one of you niggas dare come to me in 2025 <laughs> and say, Monty, you ain't rapping like you was in 2020. They go, I'm in the red, red in 2020, so I'm hungry to, hungrier than I've ever been. So I'm, li- I'm liable to say anything right now. Mm. Like, for real, for real. 2025? The way I the way I position it and the way that I bet on myself now, if that shit works, oh please believe it's gonna be plenty of rich nigga raps. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a lot of them, and I'm doing with with a smile, nigga, because we 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 bet we bet on ourselves and we made it. Why are we the only people that don't get to do that? And then it and then it not be criticized. Oh, he's braggadocious. <coughs> Excuse me. It's not. <coughs> excuse me. Ooh. No. Of course, twenty one's not isn't isn't hasn't forgotten where he came. It's it's impossible. It's it, it's liter- literally impossible. They they trust me. The meetings and shit they don't let you forget that you just a nigga. It doesn't go away. So the, the the nerve the nerve of anyone holding anyone that bet on themselves to that magnitude. Cause please believe, like we were watching, we were watching uh, Sajmal one video. So like just watch, like look, like looking at him going, oh, that budget was minimal at best. Like just seeing the evolution, and it makes you, it makes you really, really proud, and like, it makes their story endearing too. On some, on some shit completely outside of like music, 
like just some story shit, right? Bro, no hearts special effects were amazing <laughs> <laughs> to this day. Hey, I was watching this. This was a long time, like 2012, and I was watching this old BTS of the Key video, a Key and Father video. Mm-hmm. And 21 Shout was in the Father, bro. 21 was in the background, and Key was just joking. He was like, "Nah, that nigga don't rap. He's just my shooter." Mm-hmm. So funny, funny how things work out, huh? <laughs> it's like. Yeah, I, I I I wanted to bring that up because you hear it so many so often. I want the old yay, I want the old J, I want the old Wayne, I want the old this. No. Please don't go back to rapping how you was, because that means that means some shit went very wrong. Or even if you have like a flash, if you have a uh, quote unquote flashback uh, rap that you that you did recently that was similar to some shit, or even like hit a, hit a space where uh, people that l- are talking about that flashback person, mm. um, that it rings to them, you know what I mean? Like even if that's the case, that's only because it's just it's still the same person. Yeah. They're just an elevated version of themselves. Yeah. So like it's not like they can't rap like that. <laughs> it's like my nigga, I, how many times can I rap like that, bro? Like you mean? Do you ever get bored, Dan, just doing the exact same thing over and over and over? Do you ever just want to go challenge yourself and find a whole new pocket? Like, yeah. It's it's so dope. It's so it's so dope to see. And so I as hip hop continues to age and we keep and we keep we continue to do this in real time and like figure out what its value is and what the value of some of the art that's being delivered in some of this and I just want I, I want I just I wanna challenge us as as fans and consumers to be a little bit more graceful. Um, in terms of how we're receiving the shit, like I, I don't say you got that. That is not me saying you gotta like everything. That's for damn sure. But we're reminding ourselves that these are other humans, and and if and and oh by the way, if you don't like that shit, it's hell of fire shit being dropped. Mm. That is, if you can't find nothing dope, my nigga, sorry, that's about you. That ain't about don't don't you dare say music is trash or hip hop is trash or ain't nobody talking about nothing bullshit that's your only job that's not even a job <laughs> it's, Bull it's to continuously weave through all the, all the Bruh, music and it's shit. fire music being put out every every Friday but every day for sure if you if you a band camp it's a whole I think it's a whole scene on band camp of just fire shit being put out so I, I, I laugh, I laugh, because it's a bunch of them, it's a bunch of them old niggas around here in the Bay specifically, oh man, ain't nobody, nobody rapping about nothing, ain't no hits being made, you little lazy motherfucker, shut up, you not doing the work, and and I'm the last nigga you get to say that to, bro, because I'm part of Grand National, we just put out three fire ass bodies of work, it feels me. and then Jane Hancock dropped on your ass, and then Kevin Allen dropped on your ass, and, and, uh, uh, Sharp, Deuce and Monty about to drop on your ass. And then Ian Kelly is coming. And then Champ Gr- Like, come on, bro. Don't. I'm the wrong nigga to say that to. In, in in the realm of here. But Salt just put out a record. Conway just put out a fucking record. Uh, I'm, so, I'm sorry, but that, uh, that Spillage Village shit is crazy. It is absolutely nuts. So please don't tell me there is any fire music, bro. What are we, what are we doing? And just and to let people, oh, oh man, it's these 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 crazy these crazy lazy hot takes. Oh, it ain't what it used to be. It, when they do that shit with sports, it's it's weird. Oh, they don't. It's the it's the softest era of the NBA. Fam, these niggas run. <laughs> Stephen, Stephen A. just went on that rant. <laughs> this th- these niggas run exceptionally faster, are exceptionally stronger, jump exceptionally higher at a, at a, at the, the at the average player is is significantly built more superior than the, the than the people that came before them. That's how it should be. We all that 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 in no other world does that exist. Yeah, you know Charles Oakley plays point guard. <laughs> Seriously. Seriously. And can shoot from thirty. That's all. <laughs> it's uh, this shit. This it, I'm I'm just fascinated by it because, at the same time, we want to leave our imprint, leave our legacy on shit, but we have this obsession with not letting the the next generation be better. I'm sorry, my nigga. If the if the the niggas after me aren't hella better than me, I did something wrong. So when Charles and all them is oh they don't play like they used to, nigga. If you think that, guess whose fault it is. 
Seriously. If 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 you don't if you don't leave it in a space for for them to come be better, be better and earn more, you fail. Cuz we keep trying to we keep trying to live live for us in these in these spaces. This shit ain't for us, bro. We not not gonna reap the benefits of, of the work we're doing. We shouldn't. Not the not the max, right? But it we should expand this shit for these kids to come in and have way more freedom, be way more insulated and supported, and nigga and be fearless of shit and not get they will value from white people. So that's it. To to your point, G, Stephen A sitting up there talking about this the softest era back, man, please. Mark Jackson was backing niggas down from half court. The Aaron Fox can get from baseline to baseline with two dribbles. Shut up, please. <laughs> it's am I crazy? That's what, that's why I can't watch basketball really, because it's like these these experts. And I'm like, damn, I don't really feel like an expert, but I that, I know that was stupid. Like I know, I know what you just said was stupid. You know who does an amazing job in, uh, as an analyst, and I didn't. Dory. Think, I didn't think that they would. Dory Burke. No, Dory definitely does. But uh, bro, how the fuck you got to be calling her Dory? <laughs> <laughs> I love her. Doris sure, Burke. Doris Burke. Sure call me, you know. sure. I love Doris Burke. <laughs> but uh, uh, Chris Webber. Oh, uh, unplug your microphone. I'm yelling surprised by Chris Webber, I'll, bro. I'll um, plug your microphone. Hey, man. <laughs> that C Web is the last thing I want to hear. C Web still ain't talk. He still ain't talked about the Fab Five, but he, <laughs> he, he, he can break. He can break down this shit if it comes to analyzing. Now, I, now I, and, and I was. It's kind of like being surprised at Tony Romo being so amazing. No, shit. Tony Romo's an awesome uh, color commentator. That's always weird. Why they call him color commentator? Because. You know? Because co- because color people got the they got the Tony cra- Romo's they got not the creativity. Color. Tony Romo's not colored. Nah, but you call shit what it is. <laughs> it's the <chaos> <laughs> Um Staying with music, uh, reason. Y'all listen. Nothing great out. You made it through. Hmm? You made it through reason shit. I don't even know reason drop. Oh man, oh, okay. Lex. So if so, what I was saying at the beginning of the episode. Am I tripping? And he got like crazy better crazy and not that he was ever bad but he was like it's, it's tde it's so dot q q for style is just like out of this world rock uh, isaiah rashad and then i'm just like Reed, I'm, I, was, I was always trying to hear it's like damn what is it and then this made it make sense he's Damn, bro. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't I'm. I'm trying to. Cause I think I. I. It's. It probably. It probably comes across as hate. And it's. it's it, I. I swear to you, it's not that. It's just. The. The. It's why even watching Soul and them grow like long term too to this day is still one of my favorite bodies of work. The music, the style, like it was, and this is early Soul, so, it felt like. The early, it felt like early reason as an addition to, to TDE, wasn't even up to the old standards, and then he just came with this shit and surpassed everything. I'm like, yo, this is incredible. It makes me think about this. Is, it's on this topic, but mm-hmm. not really. It makes me think about something Dr. Dre said in the interview a long time ago when mm-hmm. he was like, some people get mad at when I sign an artist and then he just sits mm-hmm. for seven years, but really he said those seven years. He's making music, and I'm waiting for him to get it. Yeah. And then they were like, what's it? He was like, it's... Because you know that they're a star, yeah. but there's just this one little thing that they need to switch. And they got to unlock it. And then as soon as they unlock it, he was like, the music's just different. Yeah. And he was like, and that was partly the reason why I put the game with 50. Yeah. Because I knew 50 was going to unlock that in the game, because mm-hmm. he was like, couldn't nobody else do that to him. Yeah. And it was like when I heard that that reason album, I was like, they unlocked it. They yeah. unlocked it. No, I don't know who did, but no, I I felt the I felt the same way because it was like even even the last few records and then stuff that they were doing for like uh, TDE appreciation appreciation week. Like I thought everything Reason was doing was like some of the the better moments of that. And it's like okay, this this album this album might be dope. And yo, 
So salute, salute to salute to the whole crew over there. But reason, man. Sheesh. Like you get the. I guess. I guess what 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 is um, what's to be celebrated is when you get to hear who's done the work, and not that I'm not that I'm anybody. You got to prove anything to. But he earned a he earned a lifetime fan just on his commitment and coming back, and then and then just. I don't know. It's it's, it's it's something about being able to watch somebody evolve in real time that's that makes you a super fan for life after you get to witness it for real. So salute, salute the reason. Um, who else? Uh, the Benny, Little Wayne, and Big Sean song. You guys heard that one? I did. Mm-hmm. Salute Wayne. Salute Sean. I'm really happy for Benny. <laughs> What's happening to me? Ah. I don't know. I, I, for the life of me, bro, I don't know. <laughs> what, what every, what everybody's beef is with modern rap music. Call me crazy, but I feel like, I feel like shit's better than it's ever been, man. It's some amazing shit happening right now, and everyone's a critic, and everything's mid, and everything's just like, oh, it's okay. It, it perhaps perhaps my ears are broke. Perhaps there's just too much going on. Perhaps there's not enough time to consume and to be fans. But the the back the backstories be mattering so much. I feel like to really enjoy these records, hmm. and that's why I say a good look for Benny. Like I gotta listen to it a few more times to make sure I'm not listening with those ears of like. Damn, I know Benny's story so well at this point. I just, I'm so happy he got this feature, as opposed to like, nah, the song was just fire. I feel like the song was just fire, but it's like, nah, I'm really just happy for Benny though. Like, I think it's both. Okay. Okay. Because their verses, like, <laughs> listen to those verses. But I feel like some people just want to say a song's mid or whatever is because, oh, a lot of people saying it's a good song. Nah, it's weak. Yeah. I, this, this, bro. Danny, Danny Green's wife is getting death threats for missing a shot. This world is sick. Like, wh- oh yeah, Danny's big sick. Danny's big sick. Danny's big sick, or or the, or the fans are sick. No, nah, I'm saying he's sick because he still got to be there for five more days. Like, and, and pretend to give a fuck about a game, bro. That no yeah. one find no one finds this strange at all, that that this this is how people are operating. I don't. I, 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 I. Yeah. No. Some people are gonna come out of this, uh, come out of this bubble with some real like, real mental issues, because like they they when you have bad like he because he talked about this when you have bad games in that bubble, it it's it's like the the world is on fire because there is nothing else going on. So like people are tearing into you completely different than usual. That's the reason why the asterisk next to this bubble thing is gonna be for it being harder than it is like easier because like it's a mental game, not the not to forget the physical part of things. Physical is what it is, but mentally bro, folks is on your is on your head. And on your family head. We um I thought that too, G. Like the 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 gym being empty and it being like, I know Scotty Pippen's like, oh, that's just glorified pickup ball. I'm like, uh, no, it's not. <laughs> it's not. I couldn't imagine worldwide TV cameras at at O'Dowd on a Saturday morning, and and it, and you and it's best of seven, and it's real. It's real stakes. Like. I don't know. I like. I, I don't know where where Scotty and him from, but some of them pickup games is crucial. Well, the advantage is gonna go to people that have been in the league for less time than people that have been there for longer, hmm. because of like forget what anybody says. If you if you play at a, at the level at that high of a level for that that period of time, you in a way do become a robot. Oh. So like they talked about uh, Russell Westbrook. Uh, changing like 
where he stands on the free throw line or some shit or something happened where he had to change they he was no longer allowed to stand where he was standing at and bro was bricking every free throw that he could put up because his mechanics is built to shoot from a certain spot that's where he's always shot from if you change any minor thing then all of a sudden it trigger something in your brain for you to no longer be able to do whatever the fuck it is. Mm-hmm. So like for them first, people have been in the league for, you know, think about LeBron or whatever, been in the league for 17 years. And at that point, you play for fans. If you don't have fans in the gym, how the fuck are you supposed to get yourself up? Sure. You know what I mean? But if you're like a, if you're somebody that just came into the league like a Tyler Hero, he's playing higher basketball than he's ever played in his life because there's, the expectation is different. And also, all you got to worry about is the fact that you just got an internal game going on with Kyle Kuzma. That's about <laughs> it. Other than that, bro, it ain't Poor shit else going on. Hmm? Poor Kuz. Uh, Kuz is going to be all right. <laughs> Kuz is a sniper out there, bro. Nah, Kuz is, Kuz is fine. Kuz is fine. Um, we, pick, we, we, we were going to talk about the bubble and, and Danny and, and Brian and stuff. Do you want to stay there or we want to finish the music real quick and come back? Where are you music? Um, your take about J. Elect, the... Um, his, shit, his original album finally leaked for people, and do you think it was really leaked? No, that's not how that shit works. I was about to say, yeah, it's not there's no way he could keep an album for eight years, and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden ah, it leaked, yeah. and then be put on titled with perfectly leveled. <laughs> Jay Lick is an interesting cat. He's an interesting cat because. I, I do think that there's a certain level of like uh, like lack of confidence on some things, mm. but I think he did get a good amount of feedback that was beneficial from the album that he did with Jay, mm-hmm. and I think that that softened the blow for him being able to drop this album. And only to find out that it was a great piece of work. But if you're holding yourself to a certain standard, then all your work is gonna be like, I don't know if this shit's gonna work. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I think I think that's kind of where it ends up being. Yeah. Um, like a little trigger happy. I was. I mean, tr- trigger was it? Trigger trigger tr- shot. Gunshot. Trigger, gunshot. 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 Yeah. Um, that's weird. You either trigger happy or gunshot. Trigger higher gas. Okay. I I I can see those points. I also see another world in which you get access to to the greats, to people you've been fans of. Because that was the one thing out of that, that day at uh, at the show, before the show, when, when Jay Lake and I were walking around, he was just talking about, like, how much of a fan he was. And that's what we that's what we bonded over. is like, nah, I'm a, I don't want my fandom to ever go anywhere. My biggest fear is getting into this and becoming so jaded and not being able to be a super fan because I don't I genuinely don't think I'd be able to make anything if I wasn't a fan no more. Like I'm I'm really scared of that y'all, like in a real ass way, because I've seen so many of my homies that go, Oh, that shit was weak or it's this, that and then they go down and make something and then the next the next few times you talk to them like, Yeah man, I'm having writer's block and I'm going and I and I'm going, Well, it's cause you're not listening to anything. Like, you're not watching anything without without these critical ass eyes and ears. So you can't you're you're gear gunshot, right? Um and Jay Lex like, nah, that's real shit. He's like, I got into this shit, super fan, only to find out that niggas contracts A are fucked up, niggas are really, really broke, and it's not all it seemed it was cracked out to be and you're talking about somebody who's coming from being homeless. So he looking at it like, Oh, this is my saving grace on some shit and it's like Wait a minute, I can get money in this shit without the without the headache, and and that's that's probably the wrong thing to have ever exposed to niggas like that, myself included, because I it's 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 weird how many niggas you find out are here for the fame, and you pull the and and nigga, I I came to the rap, and 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 I thought everybody else did. I came to the rap, and you get to this chicken. And niggas is like, no, I just want to be famous. I can be broke. I just want to be famous. I'm like, wait a minute, whoa, it's 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 really it's really confusing. Um, but the two are starting to, because now people are exposing themselves for that's why they're here. And they're starting to drift further apart, and they're not as convoluted as they as they used to be. And you can you can get a real grasp, and you can see for real who's there. Because if that's the case, 
think of your legacy, Nip, in real time, putting other niggas on and, and diversifying portfolio and thinking outside the box. It's like, nah, like, I came here to rap and to get this bread, bro. I wonder how here for fame people are doing right now. <laughs> Fucked up. Yeah, it's gotta be a Fucked terrible up. time for them. <laughs> The only people that's winning that's here for fame right now is people that can that's uh that takes amazing pictures. Man. That's about it. Man. Hey, they're gee, trust me when I tell you they are messed up right now. Because they're the the leveraging the fame was their ability to earn. Now you can't leverage your fame. What you're famous for, you gotta go display, but you can't you're incapable of displaying it because you're only here for the fame. That was what. That's what was fueling your output or your expression. Now that's gone. And then you get to see like the the levels to fame too, because mm-hmm. like the levels. Because like a Travis Scott fame is completely different than <laughs> Tra- a Travis. Went, Travis became with the food on you niggas, bro. Like that fame is good. The, the the Travis Scott and I'm learning the J Balvin bro oh, like these like some J some Balvin's people, on a whole yeah, different type of time. Are like, yeah. like it's a different level of fame. A whole bro. different type of time. Um, we, we, or you got a tiger fan, huh? Or you got a tiger fan. You can just know it. You can just know your lane, your lane of fame. Yeah. Make the same song over and over again. I'm with that. <laughs> it works. Um, stay in music. Kendrick, Kendrick's fed up. He's done. He's tired of niggas sliding on him. Um, I, I, I love when I love when them type of niggas finally go. All right, man. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, <laughs> because it only took nine months. It only it, no, it, it's it's longer than that because you got to deal with you got to deal with Lupe on his show talking about he he better and it's like bro, I didn't even say nothing. Oh Kendrick, he 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 profited off of off of off of Black Lives and now he not saying nothing. All right, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let that slide right, too. I said I was like, bro, like it it like. <laughs> Sometimes, why can't you just leave bro alone? Like he's he's still a he go again. Just one of those people that is not here for the fame. He just came to make dope ass music, and every at every chance people get, oh let's go. And it's usually black people, and not like yo, I'm just chilling. And that goes back to people leveraging because they they tend to leverage names, and that name just rings loud. So they even if that name is not even if that person is not responding to shit, <laughs> it is the fact that when you say that name, you get us you get interviews, yeah. <laughs> which is Kendrick, nuts. Kendrick leaving TDE is. I I read the headline. I was like, they're not people. They're not this desperate. They're not they're like our new our publications this desperate to run this. And then you go, oh, no one has any integrity. Because now what they're doing is if they're not in on the conversation, they're considered late to the party, but even if it is false, rumored, they, the Breakfast Club, Hot 97, like they got to talk about it because TMZ is running it because so they, they're competing. Mm-hmm. And you go, wait, none, none, of, none of our, in, like, so where are people getting their, in, their information from? That's, that's valid, that's not dependent upon our demise and, and any chaos and then, like, we can't just we can't just exist and come pull up and just make dope shit. There's got to be hella drama around it. It's so. that's the yeah, it's the selling part for sure. Hey, it's just partly on the people that's consuming it though, because that's like a, if that's what's said. Oh no, yeah, we're not. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not uh, absolving us of any responsibility. You're, not, you're you're absolutely right in that. This this is clearly clearly the numbers are spiking when they do this shit. So they go, ah, oh, let's run it back. But even watching ESPN go, who's better, LeBron or Jordan? Bro, how many times can you run that debate? Like, when, are, is that their, that must be their, like, yo, shit's slow. That's all we got. Yeah, but that goes back to the whole LeBron not staying, like, not responding to Skip for his entire career. Yeah. Like, if right, I, John, what did you, you say about narrative? What do you say? Huh? The narratives. Oh, yeah, you gotta create your own narratives. Mm. Uh, because, and what I was saying on that, I brought it up was because watching the finals and if you have like the it, it's it's amazing to see how much goes into uh, being one individual that has the entire league on your back because that means even in even in the finals where you can clearly win 4-0 you don't 
you don't you, you take your you, you pick and choose your spe- your spots because of the need to create a narrative if you 40 it it's a Jordan conversation yeah if you for if you 401 it what you would like to do then it's still that it was too easy you know what I mean like so if you if you four two it or four th- or, or four three or whatever then it it, it it you can you can switch up how difficult that might have been you know given uh, the the, uh, the you know the type of situation you had at at, um, at base so like I I look at it as you having to mess around with your own narrative for everybody else to now partake in right. which is interesting to have to have that much control over it like you're you're using utilizing other people as like pawns and shit in mm-hmm. uh, overall legacy game. Only because you know exactly how people respond to things, and they're so easy, like easily influenced. Like, oh yeah, I I took this game off, and all of a sudden I'm the the worst player that you've ever seen. But then I serve the next game, and you're like, ah oh, well, he's back in this conversation. You know what I mean? Like it's interesting. Uh, am I? Are we? Are we being too hard on the media now? I. I, I, I'm, and I'm asking because, gee, I just can't anymore. Like, especially with, it's, it's, it's. Don't get me wrong. It's disgusting when the, when a black, when a black right journalists do it. But they, it's, it's rare. It's rare. It's really rare when they like, unless you're, uh, Whitlock or, uh, or Rob Parker, people like that. Like they, they go, they go out of their way to say some, some nut shit. Mm-hmm. Um, for the most part, Jamel, Michael Smith, Bomani, like they're pretty, they're they pretty straight up and down. Like I like we get really really good, wholesome, hilarious coverage when they, whenever they do anything. And so I'm looking at their style of of journalism and I'm going, wait, why can't why can't anyone else do that? Why is it so dependent upon these crazy ass hot takes? Independent platforms as opposed to public mm-hmm. trading. Public trading is completely different. When you're dealing with shareholders, it is completely I different. See, I see. I'm rolling. But like the uh, but but Bo, I'm sorry, G. Yeah. Bo does it. Like his ESPN show is only twice a week, but I'm I'm way more entertained. Maybe maybe it's a race thing. Actually, like that's on me. I'm, I'm I know the answer to that. Uh, yeah, but I think Bo doesn't occupy such a lot. Like Bo isn't dependent. Bo isn't dependent on that platform. Got you. And that Got platform you. isn't looking to Bo to be, to be de- anything <laughs> besides like what the fuck he doing. Got like, you. Got you. hey, bro, we we not we not putting all of our uh, all of our uh, chips in like your baggage like that. Like that's not what we're doing. But that which allows him to be so amazing at what he does, man. Like shout out to Bo, man. But uh, I think we yeah we're being hard on media, mm-hmm. but I don't think it's a bad thing to be hard on media. Because you have to call out media as much as possible, because they're the people that are that'll be quick. It's like any any job that you'll be quick to say, "Well, I'm just doing my job." Yeah. You know what I mean? If you have a job where you say, "I'm just doing my job," <laughs> then it's okay to be hard as fuck on you, bro. Because like, if you're just going through the motions of what the job what the job is to partake in, then by by all means, critique the fuck out of that. Act. And I feel like. We have to be hard on media because they ain't doing their job. Like, just the idea of them knowing that it's just numbers instead of even trying to stay close to facts or whatever. Mm. It just, like, I have to make hot takes. It's like that episode of The Simpsons where Homer finally got a newspaper article. And at first when he was writing stuff, they were like, nobody's reading it. We're going to let you go. Yeah. And then he just started making up stories, yeah. and so then every time he made up stories, they were giving them bonuses. So that's that's that's. I mean, you got you got a point. I I guess I, I asked that because it seems like an easy out. Um, but you got you guys are both right. You guys are both absolutely right, and that's it's kind of like leading to the next this next it, with the, the Tory and Meg shit. All we kept saying the entire time was like, bro, it's it's it's, it's a lot. And so Fan makes an album as if his life ain't in jeopardy. And I'm like, oh man, nobody's gonna say anything. And the media is just like having a field day and it it's running up the views and clicks and engagements on their site, which means more marketing, more ad dollars. 
Meanwhile, fam is facing 20 plus years. How does that work, though? Yeah, that's a big question for money. How does that work when you're facing, like, can they extract you from your country in order to come over and... Uh, Extra, extradi- extradition is a, is a thing. Uh, extradition to from the U.S. to Canada. I'm not sure what those laws are, but I know that I know that I know that you can't be like because felons and criminals don't go to Canada because they the, the U.S. will send for your ass and Canada will send you right now uh, to extradite you. Is it because they're as an American? Are so close. As an American? Yeah, like if you're an American. Child, oh, I see what you what you're saying. If he's a Canadian, yeah. Um, it's got, it's got to work both ways. Because that'll be interesting to, to know because I would think that that would play a lot into his, 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 his psyche. Making. Yeah, his psyche on like, huh, oh, nigga, do I just... That's a really if, good point. If I just never go back to the U.S., my nigga, then I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want to do. Then. I see what you're saying. You know what I mean? I see, I see what you're saying. I, I hadn't, I'd, I'd only been thinking about it from if you're an American. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, I have a question. If he has dual citizenship... Then I think it should be fair play. Because... Fair game, I mean. Yeah. But I don't know if he does. Hmm. But I think if you have dual, then you should definitely... St- if you went through the process of getting uh, registered here, then yeah, you should definitely have that. Uh, you should be... There shouldn't be anything that stops you from being able to get extracted from where you just relocated to. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, they, they they have an extradition treaty with the U.S. They, okay. They, he's okay. Considered, yeah. I, was, okay. I, I I hadn't even considered it the other way around, but I'm once the treaty is in place, it it exists both ways. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that, that, All right. Okay. Then that. Okay. That makes that makes sense. Then. So maybe he doesn't know too much about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he's like he's like I wanted to give him benefit of doubt for being smart, like looking up the extradition treaty between the U.S. and Canada, but. Um, Look like he didn't read the, he didn't read the fine no, he, print. He didn't read the fine print for sure. <laughs> Not reading the fine print on the extradition before you shoot somebody in the foot is crazy. Bro. Um, people fear violence and civil war. Election outcome. LG. I'm afraid oh. to ask what that means, bro. <laughs> no, nah, I was just reading. I saw that they uh like that was in the polls. Like they were thinking if the election goes the wrong way. Then all of a sudden, fear fear has gone up uh, before that even happens. That there would be an outpour of violence, and a, uh, that w- that would then push forward the civil war, yeah. like the underbelly of the civil war. It's like they think that that's brewing, or whatever. But I just find it interesting because like it's another way to pump that fear into like the masses that we're going to somehow all of a sudden change everything that we're doing and, and yeah. be like this, this this vicious group which then makes people uh, sign on to the fact that like why we're treated the way that we're treated because out of because they've been pumping fear into the masses that they're eventually going to erupt and that's why we're keeping them at bay you know what I mean like it, it, it works its way into um, justifying how like you know deaths happen for us yeah. um, um, why there is a, why there is a need for a hood uh, why there is a need for you know different educations you know what I mean like uh, different jobs why there's a need for all these things like that's the, that's part of the justification process so I just find it interesting that they that they they were running that already already you know what I mean right. well it, to to your point, G. Now the last few like long drive, like so yesterday driving out to to Brentwood, um, the freeway overpass. Is I don't I don't remember exactly where we were in between between hitting twenty four to six eighty six eighty to four. In between one of them freeways on one of the overpasses, there was hella people and traffic had slowed down. I'm like, huh. What's happening up there? And it was all Trump 2020 times and American flags. And I was like, oh, because I just got done making fun of the drive out to Monterey a few weeks ago uh, to see my brother and sister, Carisha, uh, Kariga and Felicia Bailey. I love you guys. Their episode of Black Love premiered last night. Amazing. A salute to OWN Network and everything that they've done. Um, but we were, I was on my way to see them, Monterey. 
and whatever them little subsidies is you got to go through to get them up from Monterey to the Bay, nigga, that's what I was like, oh, this is where all the Trump supporters live out here. Bullshit. They right here in our backyard. And I seen, it was a gang of them yesterday. And I'm going, huh? This is, this is, this is why uh, you can't find bullets nowhere. Shout out, shout out to my, all my gun owner niggas. They can't get no bullets right now, man. So, <laughs> I work right next to a big five. Every Friday morning, there's a line around the store. And everybody at my job, we were trying to figure out what, what, every Friday morning. So, let past Friday, walk by, see the line. Then I just ask, well, what you guys sitting in line for? And the dude's like, this is the day when Big Five gets all the guns. They're at this store, gets their guns, and gets their bullets. So all we, I said, all these people are in line for guns and bullets? Yep. Oh no, it's, 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 oh, you motherfucker. <laughs> Poor baby, it's done so good. Hey, I just had to buy Sid a new laptop. Did you? Yeah, cause she was using the old one I edit on, but. Uh -huh. For some reason, they kept dropping her Zoom calls oh, yeah. and everything else. So I was like, I just went to Best Buy. The black dude was so cool. He was like, look here, play. I see that you're already over here looking at the cheap ones. We don't got none of these. <laughs> <laughs> we don't got none of these. That's he crazy. Was like, he was like, let me just, he was like, this is the least expensive one we got. I was like, hold on, that's $500. He's like. This is the least expensive one what we, we got. got. And I got two left. So you he was like, I'll mine. put, he said, honestly, since we both black, I'll slide this one to the back <laughs> for the rest of the day if you want to leave. And, and think and, about it. And think about it and come back before the end of the day. Because he said, I'm here till closing. <laughs> and that's the longest I can hold it for. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, look, bro. I'm gonna buy that thing right now. He was <laughs> like, "You sure?" Because he was like, "I'm not trying to sell you on this. I'm just letting you know." He's like, "I got three kids, and I know you here looking because you got a kid." He said, "You got the dad look on your face. Like, what am I about to do?" And I was like, "Nah," because before I went to Best Buy, I went to Staples. I went to hella places, and they didn't have nothing. So let me just try. He said, "Okay." Yo. And you back? No, no, no. I mean, I'm just recording us. Right now, do uh, a pose on it. I'm laughing at Lex though, because that, that's the type of shit that only happened to you. <laughs> put, this, put this one the back. <laughs> he, he was serious though. He said, I'll, I'll slide to the back just for today. He even told me what time they closed. He's like, we close at 8. <laughs> um, that was a that was an, an abrupt cut. Uh, we're back. Um, I don't know where to know where to punch in there, but but hey, uh, we were we were we were wrapping up anyway. I um, just didn't want to leave without without any closure, because we had, we had such a epic topic on closure. And then, then you go, I got something to say about that closure topic from a couple weeks ago. It's like, <laughs> damn, I don't even, I don't even remember what we said. Um, no, nah, but it's I fellas, y'all know how I feel about linking up, getting together. Uh, I think we covered everything too, right? Yeah. We have, yeah. We have yeah pretty efficient mm -hmm. uh tune in to lovecraft tonight yeah. um any any of our listeners that that happen to be uh recording academy voters please vote for both grand national and concrete violet for your consideration why thank you um east shore east shore release party is this wednesday that is the 14th yeah. um 10 14 uh, Tribune parking lot, uh, RSVP is required. Uh, hit me in the DMs or hit the Meet the Brave podcast DM for more information. Pre-order. East Shore is officially number 12 on the pre-orders charts. Get that bitch to number one. Go get it if you haven't. Um, Brave Area. Hit the Brave Area. Hit the, hit the We Are Brave Area site. Merch, merch, merch. Hit tap in. Hit free. Uh, a matter of fact, yeah, y'all blow Freak up. I was sitting on the LG page for heck of long, <laughs> harassing him. Hit Freak about the merch. Tell him we need the merch, cuz. Um, anything else, fellas? Are we getting some Meet the Brave merch? 
Don't be, don't be, don't be spicy with what we want. It depends on what we want. What you want to do? I think, I think, I do think it's time though. I think, you do think it's time. Talk about this off the pod, but you know. Which, hey, y'all tap in and let us know what kind of Meet the Brave merch y'all would rock, uh, wear, or even just want. Like tap in. I, 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 we should though, huh? Be tight. I want to get some '80s driving grooves. <laughs> <laughs> with the fingers get out with the fingers <laughs> this thing is sick hey it's been another episode of meet the brave see y'all next week love love yes